Um, as always, if you have a question, a question, feel free to unmute yourself um, or type into the chat box. Either one works. Oh, sorry, one more thing. I just want to make sure I'm. Yeah, great. Okay, cool. Um, equipment that you are going to need today is the same as usual. So I've got my letter ball. Um, for those that are just joining us, this can be a big ball, a small ball, a tennis ball that you put letters and numbers around. I've been meaning to make a, a tutorial how to video. I haven't yet. Um, if you don't have a letter ball with you, you can also use like a rolled up pair of socks, if that's easy for you to hold, preferably something interesting for your eye to look at that has some kind of a pattern on it, um, or a rag of some sort, again, with a pattern on it of some sort. So you've got your letter ball and then your two pencils or your two cooking utensils, whatever is easy for you to hold. If you don't have any of the above, you could also just use your thumbs or your fingers. All right, I think that's it equipment wise. Remember with this class, we've um, I checked in with folks at the beginning of class because we tried some new things last week, having to do more so with the visual system. Be because we are working the visual and the vestibular system in this class, just being mindful that you're moving at your own pace. Remember, it's normal to um, feel maybe a little nauseous, even a little dizzy. Maybe your eyes start to water or your eyes start to itch with some of this work. Um, that's all fine, but it means that you've met your edge. So once you've met your edge, go ahead and back off, take a break. You can always close your eyes. You can always grab some water, whatever feels good for you. So just being really mindful, especially if some of this work is new to you to move slowly through it, especially as we get more into the visual vestibular work. Um, and then you can in increase all of the challenges that I throw at you. Okay. So I'll have you come back to a seated or standing grounded position of some sort. So for this class, if it is safe for you to do so, feel free to slip your socks and shoes off. That is totally up to you. All right, bringing the body to a still point. We'll close the eyes. And just starting by dropping into our breath. Feel free to put both hands on the low belly today. And just notice where your breath is going into your body. How is it leaving your body? I'm gonna invite you to nasal breathe today as I usually do. So that means just breathing through your nose, keeping your mouth closed if that's accessible for you. And then just like we were doing Tuesday, I want you to try to breathe as quietly as possible. So if someone were sitting next to you, they might not even hear you breathing. So just really being able to slow and calm that breath down. <clears throat> and then I want you to feel either your feet on the floor or your sit bones on the chair, or maybe even the back of your back against your chair. Set your intention for class today. That could be as specific or as general as you'd like it to be. Noticing your head stacked on top of your spine your spine stacked on top of your pelvis. If you're standing, you're noticing your pelvis stacked on top of your legs, on top of your feet. So just feeling the weight of the bones. Let's take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. Good. I'm just gonna have you start with a few wrist circles. So just circling, you can make a fist, you can have open fingers. I'm not gonna be picky today, but just starting to make circles with your wrists. Uh, start to bring that into bigger circles. So circling the wrists, circling the elbows. 
and then starting to make bigger circles with the shoulders. So you're kind of doing this butterfly stroke motion, circling the arms forward, down and back. But can you, as you do this butterfly stroke, can you continue to do the wrist circles? Okay, so adding a little bit of coordination in. Yeah, switch directions. First of the wrist circles, then of your arm circles. So now we're pulling the arms up, back behind us, down and around. There we go, nice everybody. Let's just do one more here. Mm -hmm. Good, we'll shake out the arms. You can shake out the legs if you're standing. We're gonna find that tapping underneath your collarbones, just gentle tapping. I'm using my fingertips, you can use your knuckles. And we're gonna add the hum. Again, remember this helps calm your nervous system. So breathing in through your nose, lips are closed if you can. And finding a hum. Hmm. You're trying to go all the way out to the end of your hum. Hmm. Inhaling through the nose and then starting your next hum. As you start this next hum, I'm gonna have you find a nice easy roll down to the floor. Keep tapping that area, keep humming. Hmm. and then slowly rolling back up. Reach your arms up towards the sky, spread the fingers if you can. Inhale. Exhale, bring the arms back to the chest. Try to keep an open hand this time or an open soft fist. So you're doing more of a gorilla beating against the chest. And then find that same roll down and that same hum. <laughs> Coming all the way back up. Hands reach up towards the sky. Looking up at the sky or the ceiling, inhale. And exhale, bringing the hands back to the chest. One more, you're just gonna find these rubbing circles on the chest, kind of upper part of the chest. Find one more hum. Hmm. And then again, last time, reaching up towards the sky, looking up and inhale. Awesome. Hands come back behind you, either reaching the palms behind you back towards the ground, or if you're able to interlace the fingers behind you, just opening up the chest. And then you're gonna give yourself a really big hug, arms crossed across the chest. Bury your head between your arms and round just your upper back. Now inhale, open. You can either interlace the fingers or not. Exhale, switch the direction your arms are crossed and close. Inhale, open. And exhale, close. Couple more like that. Inhale, open. Yep, and exhale, close. Last one, inhale, open. And exhale, close. Good, coming back to a seated upright position. You're gonna give yourself a hug and you're just gonna hold that hug, yeah. So just opening up some space between the shoulder blades here. And you're gonna start to find a hula hooping of your ribs around your pelvis. So moving your body, your ribs forward, side, back to the other side, in front. Side, back to the other side, in front. So just mobilizing the middle of your rib cage. Mm -hmm. And then go ahead and switch directions, switch the direction your arms are crossed. Yep, and now you're hula hooping the ribs in the other direction. There we go. 
Okay, now you can either keep the hands here or if you're able to, hands are just gonna come behind the head. Be mindful with your hands behind the head that your arms aren't pushing the head forward. They're just gently resting back there. Yeah, so keeping that, you're gonna find that same hula hoop going around the ribs, pick any direction you want. And then switch directions. Okay, and again, whatever makes more sense for you here, you can keep the hands behind your head or you can put the hands down on your lap. You're gonna hinge forward, and if you're standing, you're just doing this from a standing position. Hinge forward with a flat back, and then sit or come back to a standing position. Yep. Hinge forward with a flat back, keeping elbows wide and broad, and then sitting back up. And you can always use your hands in front of you to support you if you need. Mm -hmm. And coming back up. Okay, I'm gonna layer on. So you hinge forward. Now I want you to roll the rest of the way down. Let your back round. Then roll yourself back up to a hinged forward position. So maybe your torso is at about 45 degrees and then come to a seated upright position. Okay, so flat back to hinge forward. Round your spine to go the rest of the way down. Round your spine back to a flat position. Pull yourself up to a seated or a standing position. That's it. Flat back forward. Round to go down. Round to come up to flat back and then seated upright. Okay, so can we make this a little bit more fluid? So we're going to go a little bit quicker. Flat to round to round to flat and sit upright. That's it. Flat to round, to flat to sit upright. Yeah, two more. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more. Inhale, exhale down, inhale and exhale up. Nice, everyone. Good, we'll bring his arm, arms out to the side like uh, the letter T, yep. Reaching towards something on your left, so finding a translation of the ribs left, and then right. Just going back and forth, reaching left and right. Trying to keep your ribs and your shoulders parallel with the floor. Okay, I'm gonna add a rotation onto this. So reaching to the left, and then I want you to rotate like you're reaching something back behind you to the left. And then back to the left and then back to the center. Glide to the right, reach behind you to the right. Back to the right and center. Left behind you to the left. Left and center. A little bit quicker now. Right behind to the right right and center. Yep, translate and reach, rotate, and back to the center. Translate, reach, rotate, back to the center. One more each side. Translate, reach, rotate, center. Translate, reach, rotate, and center. Good. Finding a few shoulder circle rolls. So you're gonna inhale to shrug the shoulders up and exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down. Really try to get as big of a range of motion here as you can. Trying to pinch the shoulder blades behind you, lower them as down as far as they'll go. One more. Okay, good. You're gonna grab that area again, just under your collarbones. Pull my sweatshirt down. Give a little bit of traction to the skin there. Just gentle. And then you're gonna look up at the ceiling. You should feel a nice stretch front of the neck. 
Slide your lower jaw forward. And then tilt your head down, look at your belly button. Tilt your head up, pull that skin down, lower jaw forward. And then down at your belly button. Yep. Look up as you pull down. And then look down. Last one. Look up as you pull down. And then look down. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and grab your ear, your ear lobes if you can. If it's hard for you to grab your ear lobes, you can just kind of push your ears down. Give a gentle tug down and back behind you. Stretching some of the tissue on our face. Then pulling the back of the ears back behind you. And then pulling the tops of the ears up and back behind you. Yep. And then bringing fingernails or knuckles to the head, giving yourself a really amazing head scratch all the way around the head, top of the head, side of the head. Don't be shy here. If you notice you've got a tender spot, you can spend an extra bit of time on there. Okay, good. And then release all of that. Just kind of sit. Notice if anything feels different in the head neck area. Good. Let's find some body tapping for the lower body. <clears throat> so I'm just going to have you start with gentle taps to your low back where your kidneys are, coming to the sides of your body, and just going back and forth from low back to the sides of your body, low back to the sides. You're gonna work your way down the outside of the legs. Or as far down as you can, you can give your feet a rub, and coming up the insides of the legs. Go ahead and do that a few times. If all you can reach is your thighs, then you're just gonna stay with your thighs. Remember, you can do taps or strokes, or you can do more of a rub. Whatever feels good for you and your sensory perception and your skin, it doesn't always have to be the same each time. Make sure you get the bottoms of your legs, the tops of your legs. And then lastly, we'll bring our hands to our stomach. We're gonna find a circle rub in a clockwise direction. This is the direction that helps with digestion. If you've been doing this for a while, feel free to maybe sink the hands in a little bit deeper, breathing into any tender areas that you have in this area. You can hold, you can rub, you can circle, whatever feels good. Okay. Good, let's bring a little bit of love to the hands and the feet. So starting with the hands, we'll give the hands a rub. Getting the back side of the hands. Last week I was also talking about the webbing in between the fingers. So maybe can you, if you, if you have access to it, can you get the webbing in between the fingers? So I'm just kind of taking the pinky edge of my hand and sliding it in between. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good. If you're able to flick, you're gonna flick your fingers. Otherwise, you're just gonna move from your wrists up and down. And I want that flick to be exaggerated, like you're really trying to flick the water off of your hands. And if you're doing fingers up and fingers down, just really trying or wrists up and wrists down, just trying to exaggerate, pulling the wrist back as far as you can, pointing the wrist down as far as you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay, good, good. Go ahead and shake everything out. Moving down to our feet. If you have access to your feet, I'm gonna have you start, let's see, we did uh, the toe weaving last time. I'm just gonna have you start with the, let's go back to the bottle cap twisting. So taking each toe and twisting it back and forth like you would screwing on and off a bottle cap, maybe five or six on each toe and then moving to the next one. If you have access to your lower leg and not the feet, actually I'm gonna show you this side. You're just gonna be rubbing using your hands, your knuckles, whatever works for you, moving from your ankle up to your knee. Remember, we're just trying to get any fluid that might be stagnant in this area back up towards the heart. So that's why we move in this direction. And if reaching the bottom of your body is hard, you're gonna be defining that same rub from your knee to your hip. Again, you can use fist, open hand, whatever feels good. Just bringing a little bit of compression into that area. Mm -hmm. Moving with whatever you've got access to. Remember, I encourage folks, even if you don't have sensation in your lower legs, this kind of work can be really helpful for getting stagnation out of there, for creating some biofeedback to going up to the brain, even if you aren't able to sense that. So it's important not to ignore these areas completely, even if we can't feel it. Go ahead and switch to the other side. You've got the bottle cap toe twister. You've got the rub from ankle to knee, or you've got the rub from knee to hip. Whatever you have access to there. I'm just gonna watch people here. Yeah, that looks good. You can even do kind of like a squeeze and release going up the calf or a squeeze and release going up the leg. As if your leg were a sponge, that's also really, that's also a nice way to do it. Remember when we can increase the information going to our brain about our body. So when our brain has information, oh, this is my ankle, oh, this is my knee, oh, this is my shoulder then we can move more effectively, we can move more efficiently because our brain knows what we're trying to move, it knows what we're targeting. So any kind of body tapping, any technique that improves uh, sensory input is hopefully gonna help our movement. Okay, go ahead and relax. I'll have you grab your letter ball or your your ball shaped object of some sort. For those that have been playing with me a while, for a while, I'm just gonna have you go right into it. So remember that might, might, that might look like throwing and playing catch with yourself, throwing it off of a wall near you, bouncing it off the floor, just moving it out with your hand. If this is your first time joining me, I'm just gonna talk you through this. So holding that ball shaped object in front of you, you're gonna move the ball away from your body. You're quickly gonna look at the ball, say the first letter or number that you see. If you don't have numbers or letters on your ball, you're just gonna be looking, pinpointing a very specific point on your ball or your socks or whatever it is that you're using. Bonnie, I see your dog is very interested in you. <laughs> okay, good, you're gonna pull the ball back into your chest, pull it away at a different angle, exact same thing. Quickly look, say the first letter or number that you see, I see a 13 and I pull it back in. Pull it away, M, pull it back in. So you're just trying to pull it out at a different angle around your body. Oops. Trying to identify the closest number or letter that you see. This is for your eyes, to warm up your eyes, to warm up your spine. 
If you're able to play catch with yourself, so you can stay with moving the ball around. If you're able to play catch with yourself, you're doing the same thing, pausing the ball right where you catch it and reading the first letter or number that you see. I've been adding a challenge for folks, if you've been doing this for a while, where you can allow the ball to spin or as you pull it away from you, you can spin the ball. And now you're trying to read maybe three or four letters or numbers as that ball moves around you. So maybe I see H12 and W, okay? You don't necessarily have to say them all, but you're just tracking, very diligently tracking with your eyes. Maybe do 10 or so more throws. Forgot last week I was even giving you the challenge to open and close your eyes as you're doing this one. You can also add in that challenge if you'd like. I think the spinning the ball is enough of a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. Good, when you've done those last 10 or so, go ahead and just keep pulling on to the ball. We're gonna come back to some spine movements and then we'll uh, play one more round of this. So holding the ball into the chest, you're gonna reach it all the way up overhead. Yeah, hold there. If you can, if that's a little too high for you, we can keep the ball into the chest. Take a nice side bend to the left. Now pause, look up at the ball, okay? Head back to the center, body comes back to the center. Side bend to the right, pause, look at the ball. So that means your head, neck, your nose is pointing at the ball. It's okay if you can't actually see the ball. And then everything back to the center. And again, side bend left, look at the ball. Everything back to center, side bend right, look at the ball and back to center. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you reach forward to the left. I stay on the ball. And then starting position, that ball comes back overhead. Reach forward and to the right, looking at the ball, and then back overhead. That's it. Forward left, and back up. Yep, and forward right, and back up. Awesome. Now reach that ball up as high as you can, back as high as you can, so really pulling that chest forward and then pull the ball all the way in. You can set it on your lap <clears throat> and just give your arms a little bit of a shake. Okay, we're gonna play one more round of this, but I'm gonna add in a little bit of brain speed games here. So when you catch or when you see a number, you're gonna lift the left side of your body. That might be a left foot if you're standing. It might be a left shoulder shrug or it might be a left arm raise, okay? Whatever is accessible for you. Uh, when you see a letter, you're gonna lift the right side of your body, shoulder shrug, arm raise, or leg. So number, lift the left side of your body, letter, lift the right side of your body. Uh -huh. Number, left, letter, right. Okay, so go ahead and go right into that. Remember, you're trying to make it as quick as you can. So right when you see that letter number, make a decision to move whichever side of your body is, is correct, and then go right into the next one. For those that are blind or visually impaired, I'm just gonna bring you into a little bit of vestibular work. Okay, so this variation is only for folks who are blind or visually impaired. You're gonna cross your arms over your chest and moving from your hips, so not quite a hula hoop, because you're keeping your torso straight. You're going to circle your body around your pelvis as quickly as you can. Let the eyes and the head go with you. You're maybe going to do about five or six in each direction. If you want to, like Lori, if you, if you want to, you can also do spins in your chair. It's totally up to you. Yeah, and just making sure that you're recalibrating in between each couple of spins. Okay, so my letter ball playing people, let's maybe do 15 or so more throws. 
My spinners, just take it easy here. Just checking in with how the vestibular system, how you are feeling. If you need to take a break, you can take a break. And when people are done, so I know you're done, I'm just gonna have you take a nice roll forward down to the ground. When you've done 15 more throws or about 10, 10 to 15 spins. Yeah, that looks great, everybody, nice. I see, see some people spinning and some people throwing. No rush, take your time. When you're done, find that roll down to the ground. Yeah, Re focusing on your breath. And then slowly rolling yourself back up. Yeah, it looks like most folks are done. If you're still going though, keep going, no worries. Uh, have you set the ball down? Okay, we're gonna grab your two pencils or cooking utensils or whatever is easy for you to hold. Okay, we're gonna come into something called saw here. So just adding a little bit of rotation into the body. So arms are gonna be out in a T holding those pencils. Okay, so we were working on that flat back lean forward. Again, if you need your hands on your thighs for this, you can have your hands on your thighs. And instead of holding the pencils, you're just gonna use objects around your room uh, for the visual part of this, okay? Otherwise, hands are onto a T. You're gonna hinge forward. You're gonna take, uh, let's see, this is, my, <laughs> this is my right hand. I'm gonna tap my right hand to my left ankle if I can reach it, or my left knee if that's more accessible. But I'm kind of in this hinged forward position, okay? The, my left hand is holding the pencil behind me and I'm looking up at that pencil. Good, and then I come back to my starting position, seated upright with hands out into a T, hands out by your side. Okay, same thing other side. So you're gonna hinge forward, left hand coming to right ankle or right knee or right thigh, whatever is accessible for you. Eyes and nose point up towards the back pencil and then pull your body all the way back to a starting position. There we go, okay. Hinge forward, right hand to left ankle, look back at the back pencil, and back to your starting position. Hinge forward, left hand to right ankle, looking at the back pencil, and back to the center. Okay, so we've got that movement, let's make this a little bit faster. Hinge forward, Rotate, look at the back pencil, come all the way up. Hinge forward, switch rotations, and up. Inhale to hinge forward, exhale to rotate, and inhale up, and exhale. Inhale, hinge forward, whoops, got ahead of myself. Exhale, rotate, and inhale to come up. Find a quick exhale, so inhale forward, Exhale, rotate, inhale up, and exhale. Inhale, hinge, exhale, rotate, inhale up, and hold. Okay, let's maybe just give the arms a quick break here. Bring both arms down, give them a little bit of a shake. Okay, you can hold your two pencils out in that same T position. If your arms are getting tired, just bend your elbows into your side. You have both options here, okay? So I'm gonna have you turn, and I want your nose to be pointing at that left pencil. We were doing this last week. So eyes are looking at the tip of that left pencil. Now I want you to look past that left pencil at something on the wall behind it. So we're working on near far. You're gonna look from the wall to the pencil, wall to the pencil, and then back to the center. Looking to your right pencil. Pencil, wall, pencil, wall, back to the center. Uh-huh, look at the left pencil, pencil, wall, pencil, wall, back to the center, 
and switch pencil wall, pencil wall, and back to the center. And you're gonna be going back and forth doing that as quick as you can. I'm gonna give an alteration for my folks that are blind or visually impaired, but I just wanted to set people up for that. So you're trying to find that near and far focus as quickly as you can, as quickly as you can. Okay, for my blind and visually impaired folks, holding the hands out at your side, I'm gonna have you find the rotation with your head. So you're still gonna point your nose at the side pencil, but I want you to add a body rotation now. So just rotating your whole body to the left, keep your nose pointing at that pencil and then come back to the center. Point your nose at the right pencil, rotate, and then back to the center. Point your nose at the left pencil, rotate and center and oscillating back and forth with that one. That variation is only for my folks that are blind or visually impaired, okay? So whichever variation you're doing, maybe do five to 10 more. If you find you're getting nauseous, dizzy, go ahead and back off, take a break, grab some water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice work, everybody. Okay, when you've done those five or 10, you can drop the pencils. We'll cross the arms over the chest. Yeah, just take one more easy roll down here just to help reset the system. Pause at the bottom. Find your breath into the back of your ribs. and then coming all the way back up to the center, good. So I know we didn't do a, a check-in and a recheck, but let's just do this now, just to feel how our range of motion in our bodies are feeling. Okay, so we're just gonna start with an overhead arm raise. Palms are facing in towards each other as you lift the arms overhead. You're just noticing, you're just sensing how this normally feels to you on a day-to-day -day basis, how it's feeling for you now range of motion, speed of motion. Yeah, um, for folk, okay, yeah. When we do next stuff, I'll give a, I'll give a, um, a different rotation, that's good to know. Yeah, because I know some folks have fusions or injuries in the neck and upper spine, so I can give uh, variations for that. Good, bring the arms to external rotation so you're in your goal post position, pointing the fingers up and down like a scarecrow, up and down, up and down. Again, just noticing range of motion here, comparison from side to side. Okay. And then we'll bring arms together in front of us, palms touching. You can always cross your arms across your chest too, if that's easier. Find a rotation to the left. So this is focusing on thoracic rotation and a rotation to the right. Noticing all of the same things here. Mm -hmm. Good, coming back to the center. Let's do some head tilting. So tilting your head to the left. If you're unable to tilt your head to the left, you're just gonna bring your body into a side bend. Just going back and forth, head tilt or body bend. Noticing how that's feeling for you. Good. If you're a standing athlete, you can be doing sit to stands. You could be doing a hip hinge forward. You could be doing a single leg balancing. Okay, good. So let's come to a little bit of uh, vestibular work and then we're, we'll keep moving here. If you were in a chair that can spin, feel free to take this into a spin, uh, whether that's manual or power. So you're just gonna be turning in your chair. Remember the faster you go, the harder it is for your vestibular system and the quicker that you might get dizzy. The slower you go, the easier it gets. If you're standing, you're gonna be doing the same thing, but just turning with your feet. And if you are seated, 
If you're seated, we're going to be moving either. This depends on, on where you are with your body. You could be doing either more of a full body circle around your hips or more of a head roll around your neck. Okay. Either way, I want your eyes to move with your head. So don't, don't spot, meaning don't keep your eyes on one thing. The whole time you're spinning or moving, I want your eyes to be circling around the room, moving with the rest of your body. Remember to do an even number of spins in both directions. Notice which direction is harder for you, whether you're doing the body circle or whether you're doing spinning. Notice if one of the directions is harder for you. Yeah, the slower, uh, the slower and the smaller range of motion you go, the easier this will be. If this is your first time doing it, please take this slowly, check in with yourself maybe after each one or two circles. Okay, so assuming you all have done about an even number of circles, I want you to pick, take a break. I want you to pick your harder direction that you were either spinning or moving in and do an extra three to 10 circles in that direction. For me, it's when I turn to my left or move in this direction. If you're unsure which one is harder, then just pick one. You can't go wrong when it comes to this kind of work. Mm -hmm. Good. When you've done X number of spins, go ahead and take a break. We're going to take one more roll down. We can let the arms be heavy here. Rolling as low to the ground as you're able to. One last time, find your breath into the back of your ribs. Slowly roll yourself back up. Yeah. Let's bring hands behind the head again. You're gonna find, you're gonna rotate a little bit to your left and find a roll down to your left. You can also have the arms crossed over the chest if that's more realistic. Okay, hold that position there. Take your right hand and reach, really reach. Find that length through the body. Breathe into the open ribs. Hands back to behind the head. Roll yourself back up. Rotate right. Roll over to the right. Reach with the left hand. Breathe into the open ribs and pull yourself back up. Let's just do one more each side. Rotate uh, left, roll over, reach with that right hand, breathe, coming back up. Yeah, last one, nice work everybody, rotate. Roll down, reach, and come all the way back up. Good. We'll settle the arms down. They can be on the lap or down by your side. Just find a few more shoulder rolls. Good. We'll close the eyes. Coming back to your breath. Noticing the weight of your bones, either resting on the floor or on your chair. How heavy can you let your body be right now? Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. We'll take one more inhale, one more exhale and we'll open the eyes. Awesome, thank you so much for joining today, everyone. I'm gonna scoot in and take any questions. Um, before I do, we just want to give 
Um, another shout out to Move United for continuing to sponsor this class. And as always, we will continue to, um, to offer these classes for free through BORC, but we are more than, more than willing to take any donations that you might have to get us through, especially the end of the year. So um, th there's a link to make donations in the email that you received to log on to this class. Sarah Don can also post that down in the comments if you'd like to make a donation of any sort. And uh, I think that's it. I will take any questions. Yes, just making sure I didn't miss anything in the chat box. Um, yeah, if you're taking off, uh, have a great rest of your week. We will be here, and Sarah Don, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, we'll definitely be here uh, next Tuesday. And I think we're gonna be here next Thursday. Is that, that's a good, okay, okay. And we'll be here next Thursday also. So we'll be here for all of next week. Um, for those of you calendar wise and or that celebrate Christmas, next Thursday is Christmas Eve, but we will still have class on that day. Um, great, have a, have a great rest of your week. Stay safe.